The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom! Come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, but there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the doors were locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, Stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Poseidon Adventure is a movie about a luxury ocean liner that is making a transatlantic crossing. As passengers are enjoying a New Year's Eve party, a huge rogue wave turns the ship upside down, and many die. Those who survive are trying to get to the top of the ship, but now the top is the bottom. Everything is upside down, with lots of damage. With a lot of difficulty, setbacks, obstacles, and losses, some do get finally get off the boat to safety. This year, to me, has been like the Poseidon adventure. It feels like everything is upside down and just doesn't end. How do you get out? St. John writes in John chapter 3, verse 19 to 21, And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does what is true comes to the light, that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been wrought in God. In our culture, there is a great battle between light and darkness, Christianity and the dictatorship of secularism. The battle is about who I'm going to give my life to, Jesus Christ or the evil one. The gospel of the ten virgins only had two possibilities, the five who had oil, the five who did not. There was no one in the middle. Nobody had half a flask. The oil represents love, 
and good works that flow from that love. We could also say faith and grace. What is the consequence? When the bridegroom comes, the foolish ones ask the wise for their oil, and they are told no. For our ears today, it may seem selfish, but only God can give that oil. We can't give anyone our own faith, love, hope, charity, or our prayer life. Only the Holy Spirit can give them that. We are not God. How can we live in a culture that continues to be so poisonous, caustic, and divided? How do we navigate in the culture of the Poseidon adventure? How do we become like the five wise virgins and keep our oil? Yesterday, the, the scripture that struck me was when I was praying the midday prayer of the Liturgy of Hours. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13 to 18. I'm going to read it and then flesh it out. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For God is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Even if I am to be poured out as a libation <clears throat> upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. The first Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, and the same advice we have from Jesus today, watch, be awake. One of the best ways we work out our salvation is by coming to Holy Mass. It's the most powerful prayer. It is the work of God. And when we humbly come before our Heavenly Father, to worship him in this holy mass, he does great, incredible work in us, more than any of our prayers could possibly do. But also having a good examination of conscience. So often, in confession, people come and, even after years and years, people will say, well, I'm not sure what to say. How we don't always prepare ourselves well and there's plenty of material for examines. And the Sacrament of Reconciliation helps us to get rid of the sins and garbage in our life. In the Poseidon Adventure, they had to get rid of whatever was blocking them from getting to the top. We need to get rid of our garbage as well. Second, remember God is working in you. Uh, St. Paul tells them that. God is working in you. God's in the present moment. And think about it. Your heart is beating. The blood is flowing. Your food is digesting, all without you doing a thing. If God created us that way, he certainly can do great work on our souls. Third, do all things without grumbling or questioning. I almost left this one out. One of our biggest battles is in the mind, is trying to keep negative thoughts out, fear and worry. Stay focused and hopeful. Jesus Christ is the only true sovereign and king. He is the one in charge. He is the one in control. Trust him, especially when things don't make sense or work out how you would hope. Fourth, shine as a light. We do this best by love, especially loving our enemies, those who hate us, those who want our demise. The good news 
there's plenty of them around. Five, hold fast to the word of life, uh, Holy Scripture. Hold fast to the Scripture. Besides the rosary and the Eucharist, the word of God, it is what's kept me sane and hopeful in these times. Whenever I seem to get discouraged, the right scripture seems to come about and lift me out. And six, even if I am to be poured out as a libation upon the sacrificial offering of faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. St. Paul is saying, don't even be afraid of death. Don't be afraid what he may take away. Offer as a sacrifice, offer it as a sacrifice with joy and gladness. No one can take away our faith and relationship with Jesus. It's ours for eternity. My brothers and sisters, we live in a difficult, challenging times. It may feel like we're in the Poseidon adventure. Whenever the suffering and crosses in our, are in our life, we must have hope. We have the light of Christ present with us and in us. He is the oil that is in our flask, our bodies and souls. He is with us wherever we go, whatever happens to us. And he knows what he's doing, even when we don't understand. Someday, it will all be revealed. For now, we keep going. We have a mission of Christ's love to bring into the world. They may or may not accept it. We can't force it, but we must be faithful. In two weeks, we celebrate Christ the King, and we are reminded that he is the only true sovereign and king. And throning him in our hearts is to give us perpetual oil. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Regina Cieni, Letare, Alleluia, qui aque menuisti portare, Alleluia, resurrexit sicut dixit,